Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen from the flight deck. We'd like to welcome everyone on board Flight 501 with service from the Toronto International Airport to the London, Ontario Airport. Our flight time today is approximately 37 minutes, and today you have the privilege of flying on the brand new Majestic Dash 8 Q400 aircraft running on prepared version 4. On behalf of the entire team here today, welcome on board. That's right, uh, YouTube, it's finally happened. After six months of waiting, Majestic has released the Q400 for prepared version 4. I'm pretty uh, excited to finally get my hands on this airplane. I've been looking forward to flying it for quite a little while now. Um, it was uh, a lot of fun to fly in FSX. I've had a lot of experience on the Real Dash 8, and uh, I did enjoy flying it in FSX, but uh, there's a lot of things that prepared does very nicely to make things just that much nicer uh, between the better lighting, uh, certainly less uh, memory errors and less errors overall compared to FSX that uh, I just couldn't wait to get uh, a high quality airplane uh, running in uh, prepared version 4. So here we go. Uh, this is going to be a uh, first impression. I had a, uh, I've already done uh, one flight in this aircraft. Um, I was trying to record it and there were some uh, audio glitches so it, uh, I've decided to just re-record the whole thing. So uh, it's... Uh, but uh, I'm very excited about this. So this is just going to be a very quick uh, flight uh, from Toronto to London. I uh, haven't really had a chance to set up too much with this aircraft. I've configured a few things the way I like them, but uh, there's a bunch of stuff that isn't done yet. Uh, so uh, way to go, Toronto Scenery, driving through my airplane. Oh, no, oh, didn't actually drive through it. Perfect. All right, so but let's get started right uh, from the start here. We'll get into the flight deck, and we're basically just going to set ourselves up for this flight from... Uh, Toronto to over to uh, London. So we're going to start with uh, just the flow uh, to make sure that everything is correctly set up for departure. So electrical panel, ice protection panel is all set, lighting panel is all set, fire protection panel is all looking the way it should. Um, APU panel will leave it off right now. The uh, engine addition is all set up, the cabin controller is in auto, valves all the way closed. Uh, we should have the nav lights on because we have external power applied to the airplane right now. Um, turn on the emergency lights, turn on the seat belts, the, pass the smoke uh, lights, check the uh, caution warning lights here, and they should stop flashing actually when you press the warning light, but that's fine. That's one of those uh, minor little sim things I'm more than willing to overlook here. Um, just check all the warning lights, and uh, this thing lights up like a Christmas tree when you do uh, a lighting test here. There's just lights everywhere that you have to check. Uh, all over the flight deck to make sure everything looks good. Perfect. Shut that back to its normal position. Research fan is uh, normally on. And that all looks good. Come down here, make sure everything is off, centered. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to be doing about a 59,000 uh, pound takeoff. So uh, this version of the Q400 does come with the same control panel as the previous version. So uh, I've got this set up for the flight I did uh, earlier. We're just going to uh, send uh, that data right back again. It's all calculated. 66 passengers, 1,000 pounds of baggage, 4,500 pounds of fuel to get us to uh, London is all we need. And uh, it's been sent. As always, it pauses just to sort of give you a good signal that it has been received successfully. The data has been received successfully. And uh, so now we can set our numbers where we were setting numbers. Actually, before we do that, we should check the upper panel to make sure if flight taxi's taxi, all the switches are, uh, none of the switches are pushed in. Set up our guidance, uh, flight control, flight guidance control panel here. Heading, alt cell, and uh, heading. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll set up our speeds. We're not going to, well, we can set up the heading, but uh, we can't really set it up until we know which one we were departing off of. But we can switch the source to FMS mode. Set up our speeds. I've got speed cards set up here for 59,000 pounds, which is what's on the control panel here. If I go here quickly, you'll see our takeoffs, 58,477. So we round, always round up in aviation, always take the number of speeds for a slightly heavier uh, departure. We'll do a flat five departure. So we've got a V1 and a VR of 129. Just zoom in a little bit to make sure we can see this much easier and set it. 129. 29. This is the tedious side of aviation. VR1 or V2, excuse me, 130. 
But what you want to do, of course, in aviation is you do want to make sure that everything is set up prior to departure. So all of your speeds are inputted VFRI 139 and V climb's going to be 150. You want to make sure all your flight plan, your speeds, everything is inputted because after departure is always a high workload, as we all know. So we want to make sure everything is set up properly ahead of time. So there's 150. The altimeter in Toronto is 2963, last I checked, unless it's uh, changed. So we'll make sure everything is set to that. It's pretty close anyways at this point. Let's just uh, check the latest weather here and make sure that it is uh, completely accurate. Looks like it's 2964 now, so pretty close. 2964. I'm going to get rid of the control column here for the time being, just to make it easier to uh, set the DA and MDA. So we take off the DA. We're going to set the MDA to our flap retraction altitude, so we have a visual cue when we pass the flap retraction altitude here. All right, so there's 1560. Perfect. Uh, just check everything. No flags anywhere. The gear is down, of course. No uh, batteries looking good. All of our hydraulics and everything are all looking normal at this phase. Uh, switches are all out. MFD is set up just fine for now. These are both in. Switches are all off, all off. We can test this EVR. It won't do much. I'm just going to accept that FMS right now. Uh, trim. Uh, we're going to trim for some nose up trim. And I heard a little caution light go. I don't know why, but when you start trimming when the aircraft is... Uh, the hydraulics are off. One elevator goes completely out of whack, and as a result, you get the elevator asymmetry light. Parking brake is on. Power levers are disc. The condition levers are idle. The flaps are set to zero. Uh, radios are looking okay. Trims zeros. All the trims are centered, and uh, there we go. All, everything's normal on the uh, ADS, so we just have to set up the uh, flight plan in the computer. So we can just copy the company route, which we downloaded from Simbrief. I do recommend Simbrief.com to anyone who asks. It's a great site. makes it so easy. The fuel planning is really quite accurate. It's not perfect, but it really is it's seldom totally perfect in real life anyways. There's always variables that come into play, but it's a very, very good uh, place to plan your flights. And uh, you can download all sorts of information. Flight plans printed out. You can download flight plans to load into your FMC. All sorts of great stuff there. So uh, flight plan. We do need to add a departure, and what we'll do is we'll call up clearance, and we'll get uh, our clearance again to go to uh, London here. So we'll uh, call up Toronto Ground, make sure, and we'll find out what runway we're going to depart off of here. So ground is on 2165. Pull it up. There we go. Make sure we do have the volume up. Toronto Ground, hello, it's Porter 501, looking for the IFR to London. Porter 501, Toronto Ground, stand by one for clearance. Alright, while we're standing by, we'll set up the fuel anyways here. So our ZFW, we can set off our control panel. ZFW's right now at 53,977. So we'll set that, ZFW, 53,977, enter... Usually double-clicking doesn't work very well because it assumes you've only pressed it once. Uh, and we can set up the fuel. Reporter 501, the trip set by one ready to copy. Go ahead, Reporter 501. Reporter 501, you're clear to London Airport via the Pemba 3 departure. Darrow transition, flat plan route. Departure runway 23 and squawk 6373. Okay, Porter 501 is cleared to London by the Pemba 3 departure, Durlo transition flight plan route, departing off runway 23, squawk code 6373. Porter 501, read back correct information Delta, push it to discretion, and contact me when ready for taxi. We'll grab Delta, push at our discretion, call you for taxi, Porter 501. All right, so we've got the squawk code in there, 6373 is in the box, perfect. So it's off runway 23. And uh, we'll finish what I was doing here. The fuel, we've got 4508. Another thing that Majestic does, it's not totally realistic because the fuel system in the real Dash 8 only goes in intervals of 5 pounds. So, what are you going to do? Uh, but it's still, uh, again, a great, a great airplane overall. Minor little things you'll notice only if you really know what to look for. Alright, so, 
uh, we have to program in our departure SID here. So we go to Flight Plan Menu, Depart. We're going to depart off Runway 23, so that's number 6. We're going to depart on the Pemba 3 departure, which is number 20, SID number 20. And uh, it gives us transition as the runway. It's not totally correct. It should be the end of the SID is the transition, uh, the Durlo transition in this case. So what happens, of course, is that it's not quite totally programmed in there. It's got the initial part of the SID perfectly programmed in there, but then it ends at the point where the common transition ends and there's differences between the different SIDs. So uh, fortunately, uh, I've got the SID plate right in front of me here. The only thing that's really missing here, it goes from Mixit Litor, goes to a place called SEVB. So we type in SEVB, hit enter, it does know the intersection, so you can hit enter again or press accept. And then after SEVB it goes to Durlo, so we deleted the no link. And there we go. So it goes mix it, lead to our SEV Dear Low London. So that is our flight plan route. That's all in there. Uh, the only thing missing as well from pay fuel page 2 is uh, putting in our ETA so we can get our local time to uh, get to uh, London. Alright, so we've got this all programmed in. We're pretty much ready to start running some checklists and start getting ready for our departure here. So we'll start off with our originating before start check, which uh, says, and we've got to zoom out a little bit and look around while we're doing it. External power APU, external power is on, and you know what? We're going to start bringing the APU online as well. Self-test runs, passes, press the start button. And recirc fan on, emergency lights armed, anti-skid. Always miss it because it's in the FOs, uh, the first officers flow normally, and uh, so it's in front of the first officer, so the captain never really does it. So it's funny to always have to sort of play two roles, and there's not a whole lot that the FO does on their side that is not done on the captain's side by doing it on the captain's side here. So uh, it's the one item that always seems to get missed. Andy skid is on. External check. We'll say we did a walk around. Gear pins. We'll make sure they are stowed. And uh, you can actually install the gear pins. And they're not installed because it says I can install them now. While I'm here, I'm going to just start closing up the doors a little bit. I'll st close the aft baggage when I get a second here. Uh, there it is, half baggage. All right, and uh, we'll just leave the front door open for now, the 1L door. Uh, alternate go gear door, landing gear inhibit switch is closed and norm. And flight deck preparation is complete, so the originating before start check is complete. Then we'll do a before start check as well. This is done every flight. The originating only happens first, flight, first leg of the day. Uh, so before start check, circuit breakers, we've got checked. Escape hatch is closed. And you can actually open this in Majestic. I love that you can actually open it. Uh, you have to click it there. It's, ta it's challenging to close it afterwards, though, so I'm not going to do it now. Battery master main aux standby are all on. Seat belts are on. Flight taxi is taxi. Yaw damper is on. Fuel quantity. We have 4,500 pounds. We only need 3,700 to get to London and hold back to Toronto as an alternate, so uh, we have 700 extra pounds. That checks. Emergency brake pressure is on and the pressure checks. Trims, we've got one, two, three set. Parking brake and, or excuse me, uh, power levers are disc, condition levers fuel off and the takeoff briefing. We'll do one now and then that will complete the before start check. So the, uh, this is going to be a 59,000 pound flap five takeoff with uh, noise and considerations. Takeoff power is just going to be normal takeoff power 90%. Speeds V1, 129, VR 129, V2 130, V Fry 139, V Climb 150, the level off altitude 15, 60 feet ASL. Freddy Master warning engine failure, direction control issue prior to V1, you are call port. Stop the aircraft on the run with deal with emergency in the event of an engine failure after V1. Consider an implied emergency, no immediate actions prior to 1560 except for raising the gear. At 1560, level off, accelerate to V Fry, track the flaps, continue with V Climb to 3000 feet once established in the climb will actually emergency. The departure today is the uh, Pemba 3 departure off of runway 23 and it states uh, fly heading 237 there we go we got 237 up heading 237 to 1100 feet then a right turn heading 245 maintain 3000 and uh, the emergency turn is uh, basically just straight ahead uh, runway heading 237 up to 3000 feet And I would ask if there's any questions, but the seat next to me is empty. So I'm not really going to get any questions there. <laughs> 
Alright, so uh, we're pretty much ready to go here. So, uh, we've got the uh, APUs online, the generator is on, is uh, selected on, so I'll take the external power off, that switches the generator on, and we can go ahead and request to uh, remove the GPU. Data services again, GPU cancel, and we're just about ready to, uh, just about ready for the push here. So we'll just close that front door as well. And once that front door is shows closed, we can check it on our doors panel here. As soon as it shows closed, any second now, it's going to go. There it is. Perfect. Uh, we're ready to request our push. So before that, we'll just do our start approved checklist. So start approved check. No steering is off. Transponder is uh, going on alt. Doors and fueling lights are out. APU bleed is off. And the anti-collision is going to red. Start a proof check is complete. Just going to do a quick look behind me. We were, we're given the push at our discretion, so I want to make sure that there's no airplanes actually behind me because we're actually on the Vatsim network today to do this flight. Just uh, add a few, little bit of traffic, a little sense of realism to this flight. All right, so there's nobody behind us, so we're going to commence a pushback. And Majestic does have their own built-in scenario. Well, we are ready for pushback. It's a little bit quiet, so you have to listen carefully. We are ready now. All right, so they asked us to release the brake. Brakes are off. Parking brakes released. It's very quiet, so you have to really kind of listen in. Uh, I find Just compared to even now, you're clear to start the engine number two. Okay, so they're starting push. It's clear to start engine two. Clear on two. Starting ah. two. And all you need to see is just a little bit of rotation on NH there, and you can bring the condition lever number two up to start feather. One thing that is nice is they've improved the modeling, or the uh, control of the start feather, the condition levers, I guess, with the mouse. Before, I found I had to switch to a 2D panel view to get uh, good control of it. So I like that they've changed that. We're going to just start a little bit of a turn here as we push off the gate. Still monitoring the engine start. Everything's looking pretty good. The ITT is uh, stabilizing reasonably. So is the NH. Everything's looking pretty good. All right, so we got a pretty good start on number two, and uh, there we go. We're pretty much lined up where we need to be, more or less. We're kind of blocking the road, but that's fine. We'll just stop here, and uh, we'll uh, take it from there. All right, so they asked us to set the parking brake. Parking brake sets off the caution light. There it is. Parking brake set. Can we get clearance at number one? Just check to make sure we're okay to start number one. Control is free and clear of no gear. Clear to start the engine number one. Come All right, up. starting one. Again, we just have to see positive rotation. We can bring the condition lever up to start feather, and it will automatically add fuel. At the appropriate time here, there's the fuel, and you see the exit start to rise. contact departures on one two eight to yeah, dash. Good light off. Good night. There we have your attention. To international departure one two eight. It's no eight. It's monitoring. Make sure that it stabilizes at about sixty four percent. That the oil pressure does come up into the normal range. ITT does not spike to uh, too high of a temperature during the start process. Looks like everything is moving along normally with this start. Looks great. Perfect. And that oil pressure is normal at the normal start. Alright, so we'll commence with the after start checks, which starts with... I want to see how far they go there. And the one thing that's kind of funny again about Majestic, and it's hard to do everything 100%, but when the engines are only spinning at 300, 400 RPM, they will not get the AC gens to come online. You have to get to about 500, 550 before they'll come online, so that's how you usually know that the, the engines are properly online is when those AC gens go out, but that's fine. So we'll do the after start uh, flow and checklist, make sure everything's done. We're going to turn on our ice protection systems now. We're also going to turn on the windshield heat because I find this airplane tends to fog up a lot. Way more than real. Uh, way more than reality. So we'll turn the bleeds on as well. We'll get the flap going to uh, flap 5. Nope, not far enough. There it is. Control locks off. Auto feather. Tank ox pumps. And we'll do a rudder check. Uh, no, we won't turn on the nose steering yet because when I try to exercise the ailerons it would steer the nose around. So 
uh, we have to turn on the hydraulics as well as the number three system to check that it pressurizes properly. You get the elevator press caution light, which is fine. And then uh, over here in the MFD, you can check and make sure ailerons, elevator goes up and down, and the rudder moves. Perfect. Yeah. Turn that back off. The pressure will fall. And we're ready to do the uh, after start checklist. Start select light is uh, that's out. External power APU, we can take the APU off as well. External power is already off. Uh, bleed air one and two is min and on. Ice protection is uh, standard with the windshield heat to keep the fog away. Caution and warning lights check just the parking brake to go, which is fine. Battery temps and loads. So uh, after start, we want to make sure the batteries are fully charged. They're not charging at more than 0 0.10, so that's fine. We can turn that to MFD mode now. Take ox pumps 1 and 2 are on. Auto feather is AF select, and the engine rating is a normal takeoff power 90%. Uh, standby high press and P2 control are on. High press and quantity, these are all checked. High 3 and elevators, we did check. Flight controls, we also checked. And de-ice pressure, checked. Flap, we've got 5 set and indicating. Condition levers are max. No steering is now on. Radar Navcom. We're going to get, uh, we don't have tower today, but we do have departure up. So we're going to get departure ready to go next. Departure 1, 2, 8 decimal 8. So we're ready after uh, we're done with ground. And uh, PFD MVT EDs are all checked. The no flags after start checklist is complete. We're ready to go. Toronto ground. Porter 501 ready for taxi. Porter 501, runway 23, altimeter 29 or 64. Taxi via Alpha Tango, Alpha Hotel, we'll short of runway 23. Alright, 2964, taxi Alpha Tango, Alpha and Hotel short of 23, Porter 501. Alright, so we're cleared to taxi, parking brake off. Taxi light on as well. Now let's get this boat moving here. One thing that I did do right away, I did make sure I changed the setting was I did turn on the using the joystick for the tiller because that just makes life so much easier uh, trying to taxi this aircraft. The rudder pedals do allow a slight amount of turn, but it's only about seven degrees either side, so it's not really enough to make, uh, to really taxi the airplane properly. It's fine on a runway, but uh, to taxi an airplane, this airplane around an airport, you need the uh, tiller. Now, it, I love the way that Majestic did the tiller. You can use the mouse on the tiller. I can show it right now, um, but you have to see the tiller. You can grab it with the mouse and you can move it, and I've got to bring the power up a little bit more to keep it going around this turn. You can grab it and you can move it, but it has to be where you can see it in order to grab it. So there's a limitation, so it can be frustrating, especially if you're doing something else while you're taxiing. The last thing you need to do is look and grab it. If you let go, it's fine. But uh, let's say, and the one neat thing is that I can do it even uh, once I've grabbed it, I can look around. So I still have control of the tiller, even though I've uh, looked away from where the tiller actually is. But nevertheless, just the initial trying to grab it can be a challenge sometimes. So I, I, I that was one thing I had to do right away, was I had to get the ailerons, uh, or excuse me, get the joystick linked to the uh, tiller, which all it does is the uh, aileron axis. When you're below, I believe it's either 30 or 40 knots, it'll move the tiller with the aileron axis. Once you get above a certain, a certain speed, it's either 30 or 40 knots, then the uh, aileron axis no longer moves the tiller. You could still move it with the mouse, but it uh, definitely allows, uh, it, 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 allow, it gives you something, you, some way to use the uh, the uh, rudder without having to set up a whole other joystick or, or something like that. So now that we're taxiing out, I'm just going to take a quick look at the exterior of the airplane because it is a very nice airplane just to watch it taxi out here. And you can see if I do move the rudder pedals, you can see even at the back the rudder does move. I can move the ailerons and it does actually move the uh, spoilers there and moves the ailerons. Rudder or elevator, it's hard to tell from the front but it is moving the elevator. I do it from back here. Yeah, you can see the elevator does move, so it is there. 
It's a, a very nice uh, airplane, well thought out. I'm going to go back inside to make sure I don't taxi off the side of the taxiway while we're going here. And maybe we'll do a quick taxi check while we're on our way here. Taxi light is uh, already on. The altimeters, we've got two niners, six, four, three set and cross checked. Slowing down here to make the turn. Takeoff warning, make sure we don't get any warning. Hold it for about three, three or four seconds just to make sure. And uh, cabin will make sure, we'll say the cabin was secured. And there's a catering van coming, I hope they don't plan on hitting me. As we make the right turn on hotel here. And even as I make this turn you can see the uh, the lighting effects, the, the shadow and the sunlight effects. Port of five zero here. one, contact departures on one two eight decimal eight, have a good night. Departure 128, that's late, thank you very much. Porter 501. As I was saying, just the sunshine on there is just beautiful. Alright, so we're going to have to not look away from what we're doing while we also switch the radios. Ah, the joy of trying to do everything for yourself here. Try departure, hello, Porter 501, ready for departure, runway 23. Okay. Alright, so we'll hold short here, runway 23 here at the short line. Delta 20, 200, 2000 feet, 200, uh, sorry, 2000 feet, passing 2000, going up. Delta 11, 20, identified, climb 7000. The nice thing is I'm not even using brakes. If you plan well, the airplane can be stopped just using disking on the propellers. Just bringing the propellers back towards disk will slow the airplane and eventually stop it. So you don't need to use a lot of brakes in this airplane. It's great from a uh, maintenance perspective. You can save a lot of wear and tear on the brakes. 4501, winds are 230, 14 gusty 20, clear take off runway 23. Cleared to go off runway 23, Porter 501. Alright, cleared to go, so we're going to get the landing yeah, lights on. Contact from Switch arrival. the strobe. Switch the strobe. And flight taxi. And we'll just do a quick lineup check. So we'll say we notified the FAs. We're going to look both left and right as well as we taxi to position here on runway 23 to make sure we're good. We'll say we notified the FAs. Transponder is already on from before, yes. Delta 1120, left turn Myrtle on course, climb flight level 230. Not a bad line up there, actually, that worked out pretty well. Not perfect, but pretty good. Uh, TCAS is uh, TA only, the MFDs are both in train mode right now. Fleet Air 1 and 2 could be min on for this takeoff, and uh, Flight Taxi is flight. The uh, lineup checklist is complete. Just going to make sure I center my uh, screen here, and what I'm going to also do is throw up my PFD, MFD, and ED, just to give me a little bit better sense of what I'm doing here on the takeoff roll because it can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. One thing that's very difficult, and this is not something that Majestic can, can really have done anything, is trying to get the air power levers into the detent because, of course, we don't have detents on most of our joysticks. And, of course, if you push it too far, then it goes to over-travel. You redline the engine. Also not a pretty situation, so... You have to sort of look at the power levers, make sure they get right where they need to be as you're doing this here. We passed 100 knots. Trying to keep it straight down the runway should be a little bit squirrely. There's V1, rotate. And positive rate, gear up. Not very well trimmed to start here. There's 1100 feet. We're going to have to make a slight heading change to 245. I press the trim button, it ends up TCSing downwards. Alright, there's uh, 1600. We'll do flap zero. Flap zero, climb power. And then we'll turn on the autopilot and we'll let it do the work. Alt star, we're at 2600 climbing 3000. Deport. Departure reporter 501, uh, leveling 3000, heading 245. We 
couple of shots lately. Not the best takeoff in the world. 4501 Charlie departure is identified. Right turn Tillamon course, climb 7,000. Right turn direct Tillamon course and climb up to 7,000, 4501. Alright, so we need to see what we're doing there. 7,000. To get this airplane climbing here, so we're just going to go IAS mode. Uh, it's almost into the red line, but it's good. There we got 7,000 feet, alt cell IAS. We'll bring it back to 230 and uh, direct Tillum. 4501, correction, make that climb 5,000. Okay, stop the climb at 5,000, 4501. Trying to do too many things at once. 4,000, climbing 5,000, bring the power back. We're already alt starring. And we're going direct to Tillum. And we'll get that. Uh, nav mode on there, and now we're going LNAV to tell them there we go. Took a minute there to get everything sort of organized. It's a lot of work to do when you're flying single pilot sometimes. That's why the transport category aircraft are normally a two pilot operation because there's just that much workload. But there we go. We've got it going now. Just enjoying the view out the window here too. The scenery is really quite uh, quite something to look at here. I've got the Orbex, uh, just the FDX Global installed, and that alone makes a huge difference. The prepared is pretty good right off the bat anyways, but the FDX Global just makes it look so nice. Alright, so now we're going to do an after takeoff check. So we take off all the switches here that don't need to be on. And uh, after takeoff checklist, landing gear is up, flaps Zero climb power is set. Bleed air. We'll just leave it at min and on. Auto feather is off. Tank ox pumps are off. Uh, dead by high press and P2 control are norm. Ice protection is, uh, we're just going to go standard plus one two, one two windshield. Cabin press and temp controls. Cabin is uh, starting to, uh, it's not really showing too much pressurization yet. Just a little bit of diff. But uh, once we start climbing, it should start pressurizing some more. FA notification so we could uh, chime the, F the uh, flight attendants and let them know that they are allowed to get up and uh, commence whatever cabin service they need to get done. Alright, now that we're underway, take a little time to enjoy the external view of this airplane. And it is a very detailed model. You can see the probes on there. You can see all sorts of various things. Uh, the texture is really quite good. They've got the uh, nose steering lock there, antennas hanging down. People sitting in the flight deck is quite uh, impressive as well. And the paint job is really good too. The detail is uh, quite good on the paint job. Just bring the power back just a hair so we don't overspeed here. I wonder who we're waiting for here. Level of 5,000 forever. sure what's going on here. I saw one traffic on the uh, on the MFD there. Haven't seen anything else for a minute or so here. I hope we haven't been forgotten about. waiting. Always be prepared in aviation. Start setting up the next frequency we're going to need. We're going to talk to 25. Order 5 is one. Thanks for the patience there. Just getting around traffic. Climb on 1,000. Not a problem. Climb on 1, 1,000. Porter 501. Thank you. Alright. Climbing to 1, 1,000. And uh, we'll just uh, Okay, this climb in pitch mode here. Right, pitch it up to about six degrees. Keep the speed up. And make sure it lines up roughly with the detail. Yep, 91% for MCL. Perfect. And six degrees should allow us to keep uh, pretty much cool, just a little bit below red line in the climb. Uh, five to six degrees nose up.
now we're going to start uh, getting into the cloud deck here. I love the clouds in that P3D2. They are so nice to fly through. They look so good. Very realistic. It's not an all or nothing with the clouds. You sort of it just gets hazy and then you sort of lose contact with the ground and it sort of fades in and out. Very realistic. I, I, I love it. it. It really does start to make you feel like you are really there. As real as it, as real as it gets, should be uh, prepared. Mono, not flight simulators. But for the time, flight simulator was pretty good on its own. All right, so we are on our way to London. Hopefully, this isn't too uh, boring. If this gets boring in the middle, I may uh, use some uh, YouTube license here and start to remove some of the uh, some of the middle content just to sort of skip past it. Make sure you don't get bored with this. But uh, I am uh, enjoying this. And uh, all sorts of things you can move here uh, in the flight deck. You can move side window demist. Ha! I never noticed that that was closed all the time. Over to Toronto Center, 125 decimal 77, Porter 501. Good day. Never noticed that those were actually in the off position, so maybe that's why this place gets so foggy so quickly. Interesting. Alright, over to Toronto Center. Victor Radio 2-5, altimeter is 2906 Just send 7,000, one ready. 7,000, ready, 7,000, feet, and, uh, I'll be kind of check out of the east Toronto Center, hello, Porter 501, 10,300, climbing 1,000. Ice detected. Alright, let's get the prop heat on. Oops, on. Porter 501, Toronto Center, good evening, climb at 14,000. Climb at 14,000, Porter 501, thank you. Alright, 14,000, make sure we set this correctly on there. 14,000 is set. Alright, so the ice protection, and we got to put the increased ref switch on as well. Now everything's on. And uh, let's see if it's actually painting. I, I love it. The ice is actually showing up on the outside of the aircraft. Oh, it's disappeared a little bit. You see it on the spinner there. And uh, I guess it uh, when the boots are done cycling, uh, all comes back on there, but you can see the boot cycling. It's great. The detail is just phenomenal on this model. And you see the ice start to build up, especially if you don't have the... Uh, I guess this is me looking out the window. If you don't have everything on. All right, that is 13,000 climbing up to 14,000. See this thing level out here, get it established in cruise, and we're going to start setting up for the arrival because it's not going to take us very long to get to London here once we get uh, Altstar. Once we get leveled off and cruise, accelerate a little bit, it's not going to take us very long. Alright, any second now, when it's within about, oh, there it is, alt, level, accelerating. And away we go. Four two seven contact arrival now. One two two All right, there we go. All right, so now the video is getting a little bit boring in the middle as we watch things just generally happen. The dash eight just flies off into the sunset through those clouds. Might be a little bit of a bumpy ride. Might have to leave the seatbelts on. Anyways, we're through 10,000. We can definitely take all the lights off. But might have to leave the seatbelts on for this one. But that's okay. So at this altitude, 14,000. Pretty much with the engines running at, uh, in the detent at uh, maximum normal power. It's going to be pretty close to... Uh, pretty close to the red line. So we're just going to have to keep an eye on it. About 14,000 is where it sort of falls off there. Four 
2501, weather update for you in London. Winds are 240 at 21, gusting 29er, out temperature 2964. 15 miles visibility, light rain, broken clouds 1300, overcast at 2500. Plane arrival, runway 25. Okay, uh, Porter 501, uh, copy that. Uh, we'll just check, make sure we've got uh, approach for 27 in our database here. Yeah, 501, my mistake, runway 27, sir. Not a problem. Okay, so we're going to just uh, check the database here. Flight plan, menu, arrive. And I'm just going to put this up where I can see it very easily. Runway 27 is the runway. There are no stars, but approaches we have the... Uh, DME runway 27, VOR DME runway 27. Uh, we're not going to do the transition via the London VOR, so let's see how that plays out after Durlo. I'm going to have to pull up my own approach plate here for the uh, runway 27 in London and have a quick look at it here. Just pulling it up so I can make sure that uh, we do have all the information we need to fly this VOR DME Runway 27. Alright, so for Runway 27, it is the only thing. It's GNSS VOR DME Runway 27. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got the whole plate here. Porter uh, 501, uh, we will plan uh, the VOR DME Runway 27, please. Oh, it looks nice in here. You can proceed and direct a seven on course. Okay, proceed direct Zevip on course for Porter 501. Thank you. So we're going to go direct to Zevip, number 11, enter. And that uh, sets us up nicely for the approach here. So we got to already start doing some VNAV planning here. Uh, yeah, let's do that to Zevip. And uh, target speed too low. How far are we from Zevip? We're only 18.7 miles. Porter 501 uh, requesting descent. So we got to start going down already. Pretty much that's it. That was our cruise. Porter 501, runway on Federal 2964. Descend 3000. Our discretion down to 3000 on 2964. Porter 501. Alright, so. Uh, going to do this as a uh, IAS. We'll just keep the speed where it is and just pull the power levers right to idle. And that'll get us a nice quick descent going on here. We're not even going to bother with the cruise check today because it's such a short cruise. We're just going to have a quick look at this, brief this up. So uh, we're going to need uh, the London VOR on here just for backup. We're going to fly this primarily with the FMS GPS, but we're going to uh, back it up with the uh, London VOR. So it's 117.2 for the London VOR. The inbound course is going to be uh, 258. Two excuse me, 258. So we'll make sure that that is uh, in there. Inbound course 5, 8, perfect, so it's ready to go. And, uh, at, uh, the VDA at LODMO 2410 and the ILS, or excuse me, the uh, MDA 1280. So we'll dial that down, 12, 1290, 1280. The altimeter's still correct. Uh, and, uh, we need landing speeds. We're going to have burned off about a thousand pounds, so we're going to use a 58,000 pound landing speed. So uh, if we do flap, uh, we'll do flap 35, just because I think we're going to be a little bit high here anyways, so we're going to be struggling to lose speed the entire time. And uh, two thirty-five on the speed. So as we go down, of course, the uh, indicated speed limit BMO on this drops, so we have to make sure we keep an eye on that. Trying to do all these things at once, fly the airplane and set up the approach, can be quite a lot of work. So we're going to have a VRF of 116. We do a flap 35 approach here. 
All right, Fire Zevip cleared the straight in VOR DME approach in uh, London Porter uh, 501. So we got 112 for our go around speed, and then our fry and our climb will be uh, 125 and 149. 25, 49, trying to set up everything all at once here can be very, can be a lot of work, so we'll round it up to 50, and that should be good. Alright, so we're going to get the approach check done really quickly here. Alright, approach checklist, uh, the altimeters, 2964, are set three times and nav eight. Put them back on. Ah, uh, the scripts. The scripts that are running with this sometimes. Nav aids are identified, fuel transfer is uh, off, the tank ox pumps are going back on, GPWS landing flap 35 is selected, high quantity Checks, caution, and warning lights. Check. Seatbelts are on. Lights are on, and cabin secure. We'll complete the uh, approach checklist. So we'll pretend that the cabin is getting secure already here. And we've got uh, about nine miles to. We're supposed to be 2,400. So. I've also had a hard time sometimes getting this to work properly. Top of descent alert. There we go. So we can arm our VNAV. And uh, what is the descent rate we need to get there? We only need about 1200 now. So we can start bringing the speed back. Bring the speed back to 190, and that'll help set us up for the approach nicely here. As we bleed our speed off, it doesn't take long to get down in this airplane. Or to, to get somewhere in this airplane. It doesn't take long to get down if you really, really work at it, but, uh... Alright, we're doing pretty good here. We're starting the approach here. We can go down to 3,000 feet, uh... After we pass Zevip, we can actually go down to, uh... 1,900 if we want, but, uh, we'll just see if we can intercept the VNAV profile to get us to Lodmo at 2,400. And, uh... Zoom this in a little bit so we get a little bit better perspective there. Perfect. So we got the speed coming back nicely. We can start getting the flaps out. This is going to work out just perfect. We'll pretend the cabin's secure. That would be 4,000 descending to 3,000. Alright, speed's good. We're going to do flap 5. And there it goes. And that'll help uh, keep our speed under control from here on out. So we're just going to switch to uh, VS mode now. VS minus 900. Get us to uh, level off shortly here. And the VNAV is armed so that we'll just continue to follow it down. Speed's starting to come back a little bit so we can start looking at the next stage of flaps. And how far are we from touchdown? We're about 10 miles from touchdown, so let's get uh, flap 10 out. And we're going to throw the gear down because, of course, we very good evening, Mr. Canada. the horn going off. I'm going to take the prop heat off, the increased ref switch, and the airframe mode selector because uh, it's 4 degrees out. We should not be getting too much ice on the, on this airplane. All right. Let's get flap 15 going as well. All right, we're coming up to Lodmo 2410. Why did it not level off? Because I did not have Alt Cell selected. There's Alt Star. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. All right, give it some power. We don't want to slow down too much yet. Okay, 825 heavy. Contact Toronto. There we go. We got some power on there. We're looking pretty good. We're 1.7 miles from Lodmo. Why is it not? Why is the path not coming down if we're... I've had problems with this. There it is. Here comes the, here comes the path. All right. So VNAV is armed. There's VNAV path. So I'll sell off, and we'll set the Mr. Approach altitude to 3,000 feet. Don't go crazy here on the descent, please. Very aggressive getting down there to Lodmo. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit more reasonable after that message. 
I don't worry about being at altitude, that's fine. Because we're on one winds 240 Clear to land runway 27. Clear to land runway 27, Porter 501, thank you. Alright, clear to land. And we'll do the before landing, t t the landing checklist with just the flap 35 to go, so the standby high press at PTU control should have gone on when I did the uh, approach check, or when I got the uh, flaps coming down, but that's okay. I am a little bit rusty on my dash 8 procedures here. The landing gear is down, the flap is 15 set indicated with 35 to go, the condition levers are going to go to max, they never really went to cruise, so that's fine. Condition levers are max, ice protection is back to uh, standard. Uh, bleed air 1 and 2 is min and on, and the FA notification will say PA, just flap 35 to go, speed is good, we're going to get the last flap out there, and uh, I'm going to have these both up just to help us with the landing. There's the airport in sight, we're going to just get a little bit closer in here, and then we'll commence the circling here. So the field elevation is 900, so uh, you know what, that's probably just about close enough. I'm just going to bring the autopilot off, and we'll just align ourselves with runway 27 manually here. You can see the pappies nicely, which is good. I feel like we're going to get a little bit low on this approach. Maybe it is just about right, but it just, uh, we are actually getting a little high on the approach. Okay, that's fine. Just uh, pitch it down a little bit. Just feel like these trees, I'm going to hit these trees, I'm not sure how realistic they are, but... Trying to get ourselves aligned, just to carry a little bit of speed above ref here, just to keep it... Just to give us a little bit of margin here, especially because the winds are a little bit strong and gusty today. Going to need a little bit of crosswind landing technique probably for this one. Alright, a little bit high on the approach. I'll just try and aim for the touchdown markers there. And we kind of lost some speed there. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Alright, not quite on center, but not terrible. going here. Max reverse is probably unnecessary. Disc is probably all we really need there. Just roll through the intersection. We'll be able to make a nice le left turn. And taxi over to the terminal. Okay, Porter 501. We'll take the left turn on uh, Golf. Alright, so we're going to take the left turn on golf here. We can close these up. Get the tiller helping us out here. I feel like I'm zoomed a little bit too far out now. Sometimes it's hard to find that happy one. Alright, taxi golf to the gates our discretion. Thank you very much for the service. Porter 501. As we go, we're just going to do a quick little after landing flow here. See how much of it I remember, anyways. Turn all that off, all that off, all that off. And then we'll do the after landing checklist, and that should uh, cover most of this stuff here. So, after landing, that's just ice protection. All right, so we've got uh, after landing checklist, radar off, transponder. There's no ground radar here, so that can go to standby now. Flap is zero. Control locks are on. Tank ox pumps uh, are off. Yaw damper is off. Flight taxis back to taxi. And uh, for some reason, one light like, came off, but one did not. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, Anti-collision is uh, back to red. Lights are all as required. Ice protection is all 
uh, off, except for the windshield heats, which I leave on, and I shouldn't, because it'll probably melt the windshield if I keep leaving them on, but these windows tend to fog up really easily in this uh, simulation, much more so than in the real aircraft. They do fog up, but not nearly this much in the real aircraft. Uh, lights are required. Ice protection main bus tie is tied, and the APU will fire up the APU on this one, just because uh, I don't want to wait for the time it takes to hook up the ground power. I just want to uh, end the video quickly when we do get to the gate. So, uh, anyways, we did make it to London. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this first look at the uh, Q400 from Majestic running in version 4 of P3D. I think it's a great, uh, a great airplane. Uh, it's not perfect. There are a few shortcomings here and there, but uh, most of them are probably as much based on limitations of the flight simulation uh, software prepared and uh, FSX before it as well. So I'm not uh, overly critical. I like the airplane a lot. It's a great airplane to fly. The systems are there. It feels very real in a lot of ways. Uh, it's, a, it's a great airplane. I, I've enjoyed flying it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as we uh, pull in here to dock in uh, London. And uh, if you uh, did like this video, if you liked anything that you saw, I am planning on putting together a much more extensive working with Kirk here. We'll just pick a gate, any gate, pick this gate, it's fine. Just crank her over, we'll say that the marshal is in sight, we'll turn off the taxi light. There we go. I'll finish my thought in a second after we uh, manage to taxi up to the gate here. Even the scenery in London is not too bad, all things considered. It's uh, the uh, FT or it's the uh, Orbex Free North America Airport Pack, so it's just going to have a look and make sure I'm across that line and clear of the taxiway. So it's a uh, it, it, it is what it is. It's it's free. It's a it's a free add-on, and it does not look half bad for free add-on definitely captures the spirit of uh, you can't make this airplane go back if you throw it this too aggressively. There we go. We'll set the parking brake and we can talk about it. It's, it's a pretty good uh, look overall. It captures the, the, the feel of London anyways. It's not a perfect recreation like much more expensive payware scenery, but it's great. It provides somewhere for me to take my Dash 8 too. Alright, so my APU's online. The generator, alright. And we'll do a shutdown flow here. Alright, so we got the condition levers. Be careful. If you are not careful about it, it's very easy to pull them all the way to fuel off. You're supposed to run them for 30 seconds. Even the clock does work. And start feather before you shut them down. It's just a uh, something they discovered about the engine in the real aircraft that uh, if you shut it down too quickly before it's had a chance to cool off at uh, idle, it can uh, cause uh, premature wear on the engine. So we have to let it idle for 30 seconds. Usually the time it takes to do this checklist anyways, if you're not sitting here talking about it, is enough time. Alright, so, uh, with that said, shut down checklist, we'll do the taxi light is off, the transponder is standing by, emergency brake is on, standby, high press P2 control R, norm, the power levers are disc, condition levers are start feather, no steering has to come off, seat belts are off, bleed air is min and should be off. And external power, APU, APU is on, condition levers 30 seconds, we've got almost a minute now for all my chattiness, so we can definitely take the condition levers to fuel off, lights as required, that means take the uh, beacon from red to off, because the engine's just shutting off, uh, standby ox and main batteries off, battery master has to stay on because the APU is running, if the battery master is off, if the APU were to fail or to catch fire, it wouldn't run its own fire protection system because it would have no electrical power. So battery master should stay on. Emergency brake, we'll just leave it on. And uh, that's the end of the shutdown checklist. So here we are in uh, London. Let's open up the door, let our people out. And with that, uh, we are going to uh, end the video. Here comes the door. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed uh, I've enjoyed flying this airplane. It's a, it's a fun airplane. It's a very, very well done model. Uh, and I plan on setting up some uh, ground school videos here on YouTube. For those of you that are interested in this airplane and like the Dash 8, I have uh, quite an extensive background on the uh, Dash 8 in the real world, so I'm going to be setting up some ground school videos on the Dash 8 uh, Q400 here in uh, here on YouTube in this channel. So if you like what you see and you'd like to find out a lot more about the Dash 8, learn how to operate it very realistically, I'm going to start off with some systems videos, and I'm also going to move on to some uh, just some general 
tips and uh, instructional videos on how to fly this plane like a pro. So if you want to see that when it comes out, the ground schools or the systems courses are underway. Probably going to be a few weeks before the first couple are done, but subscribe to my channel. You'll see them when they come out. Like the video. Any comments, questions you have below. If you have any questions about the Dash 8, please put them down in the comments below. I will gladly answer them uh, either through the comments or if it need, needs perhaps a little bit more detailed explanation, I'll gladly make videos. If you think if you have a question and you're thinking about it, probably other people are thinking about it as well. So please ask. I can't wait to uh, to uh, teach you guys uh, a lot more about this Dash 8. So that's all. Thank you very much for your time, YouTube, and we will talk to you very soon.